And I'm skeptical, very skeptical about that. If ever there was a page of literature that would convince me that there is a God, it would be that. Mutation and natural selection do something. Just have a look around this room. Why do we all not look the same? The greatest confusion comes in the failure to distinguish evolution, whatever it does or doesn't do, and the origin of life. In this video, you will see John Lennox explain Genesis in a way that will truly blow your mind, and it's not what you think. Lennox addresses the claim that Genesis gets the order of creation wrong, explaining the difference between chronological and logical order. He also discusses evolution, probability, and why evolution cannot explain the origin of life itself, offering a thoughtful bridge between science, logic, and faith. The creation story in Genesis gets the order of events mixed up a bit. How could God have allowed this if it was always going to be scrutinized when science got there? It should be perfect. And then after that, please can you give us your opinion as a mathematician on the role of probability <coughs> in the theory of evolution. We're told that random chance has a played a large part in the natural selection of genes. But how likely is this in your view? How many hours have you got? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's be, let's be brief and just approach this. You see, the assertion is that Genesis gets it mixed up. There's a book called The Genesis Enigma. It's written by a non-theist who is one of the highest placed scientists in our country, who happens to be a friend of mine. And he was giving a talk on bioluminescence in front of a group of journalists who said, you sound like Genesis. And he thought Genesis was a pop group or something. <laughs> um, what do you mean Genesis? They said Genesis in the Bible. And he was curious about this. So he went and got a Bible and started reading page one. And then he read it again, read it again. And the result was a book called The Genesis Enigma. He said, from what I know of science, this is so accurate that what I do not understand is how they knew. And if ever, and I'm paraphrasing because I don't remember the exact quote, if ever there was a page of literature that would convince me that there is a God, it would be that. Now what the questioner is probably referring to is that the order of events in Genesis 1 appears on the surface to be different from the order of events as recorded in Genesis 2. But it seems to me that that is very easily understood by remembering that there are different kinds of order. There is chronological order, and Genesis 1 certainly gives an impression of being chronological. There is a sequence. But then there's logical order. For instance, if I'm talking to an architect and builder about a hospital in Birmingham. And I say, tell me about the hospital. Well, first we dug a big hole in the ground, and then we put in um, various uh, basic steel girders that reached the roof, and then we built a car park, and then we built um, <coughs> administration offices, and then we built a ward, and then we built operating theaters above that, and then we built more wards above that, and then the air conditioning and the roof. That's a chronological description. John Lennox explains that Genesis should be read with a distinction between chronological and logical order. Genesis 1 gives a sequence of events, but Genesis 2 focuses on logical structure rather than strict timing. In my view, this makes perfect sense. The Bible communicates profound truths in a way that transcends rigid chronology, showing that order can be meaningful without being literal and it aligns with how we naturally describe complex processes. But if I ask the head surgeon of the hospital, tell me about your hospital, he's likely to say something like this. Well, this hospital is very convenient because you see, in the middle we put the operating theatres, and above them and below them we put the wards, and then of course there's the admin, the car park, and so on. When you hear that description, do you imagine that suddenly the operating theatres appeared in the sky above? Of course you don't because you know intuitively how to separate logical order and chronological order. Well, if we do that in our everyday language, 
surely we're grown up to allow it in the Bible. A lot of the confusions with the Bible are applying to it canons of grammar that we wouldn't apply to any other book. Now, that's a huge topic, and I'm going to do another bit of shameless advertising. <laughs> you go for it. Because I get this kind of question about Genesis so often that I've written a little book about it called Seven Days That Divide the World. The second question was about evolution. I'm not a biologist, although I'm fascinated by biology. And the question is limited to the role of probability, meaning presumably chance, in evolution. Now, of course, you have to step back from this. What is evolution and what does it do? And I'm a mathematical skeptic here. I must confess that straight away. But clearly, mutation and natural selection do something. Just have a look around this room. Why do we all not look the same? Well, thankfully, we don't. But the reason is that there has been selecting. I selected my wife, or at least I think I did. She probably selected me 50 years ago. And that's why our children look as they do. It was selection of a very real type. And most of us are afflicted, I say it that way, because they're mostly deleterious with mutations of which we might eventually die. So natural selection and mutation do something. And clearly there is, from the perspective of analysis, there is a random element in it. I don't find that difficult. And certainly, since we're all different, and I believe that God is behind it, God is behind that. The bigger question is, whether the neo-Darwinian theory or its modifications today can support the weight that is put on it. That is, can it support the idea that it creates? And I'm skeptical, very skeptical about that. I don't see the evidence, but the one point I would make about it, ladies and gentlemen, is the greatest confusion comes in the failure to distinguish Evolution, whatever it does or doesn't do, and the origin of life. The one thing evolution clearly didn't do was produce life, even though Dawkins has been saying for years that it did. Why? Because evolution, whatever it does or doesn't do, can only operate when life already exists, so it cannot be used to account for life. Now, that's a huge topic. And I'm not going to say I've written a book on it, even though I have. <laughs> John Lennox explains that Genesis is often misunderstood because people confuse chronological order with logical order. Genesis 1 presents a structured sequence, while Genesis 2 focuses on meaning, not timing. I agree with Lennox that this is not a contradiction, but a deeper way of communicating truth. He also clarifies that evolution may explain change but not the origin of life itself. If you enjoy content like this, please subscribe to the channel.